welcome to another update from Elixir's voyage around the world. This week we tick off a big milestone and sail for the first time in the Pacific Ocean after transiting the Panama Canal. My parents came to visit for the canal crossing and it's the first time I've seen them in over a year. To celebrate arriving in a brand new ocean, we left on a short 35 mile sail from Panama City to the nearby Islas Las Perlas or Pearl Islands. The islands were originally inhabited by native populations. However, their communities were unfortunately wiped out by the Spanish when they discovered that the waters surrounding the islands were teeming with valuable pearls. Hannah decided to stay in the city to catch up on work, and in the meantime, I got to try out Alexa's brand new head cell and Ian's new outboard engine. So I'm just gonna take the new outboard engine for a spin. Try out the seagull. This is the starting cord. It's just a bit of string with a monkey's fist in the end. And you wrap it three times around the flywheel. It only has one gear, so as soon as the engine starts, that's it, you're, you're in forward. In full throttle as well. After our trip to the Pearl Islands, we decided to venture inland to discover more of the interior of Panama. My little sister Bella came to visit for a few days and we drove to the town of Valle de Anton. And that's where we met Harry, a friendly Colombian with a unique pastime. And he invited me out one day to demonstrate how he likes to spend his afternoons. Harry runs a rescued sanctuary for injured sloths. In his garden, you can find both two-toed and three-toed sloths. Most of the time, he brings the animals back to good health and then returns them to the wild. Although, there's a few that live in the house with him and they look like pretty healthy sloths to me. It's uh, probably not going to be the most comfortable trip up the mast because this is just like a regular climbing harness so it's definitely not ideal for climbing up the mast. It's just to stop my legs from getting dead. Yeah, but does it work? And then this is where I keep my tools in my Colombian mochilla. Where'd you get that? Colombia. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> So the problem with being up here is we're right next to the Panama Canal, so every time a big ship comes past, so does its wake, and being at the top of the mast just means that you get thrown around so much more. Um, so every time I see a big boat come past like that one, I know that I've got like two minutes until I'm just shaking around. Hannah, please can you switch on anchor light over? Okay, switching it on now. What I found is there's a bit of a loose connection here, connecting the three wires to the bottom of the mast headlight. So I'm just gonna try and just take it off and clean it and maybe that'll fix the issue. The problem is, is they're both turning on at the same time. Water must have leaked into the, where the wires are connecting to the bottom of the mast headlight. Basically this unit is two different lights. It's the tricolor, red, green and white which you use for sailing and then the all-round white light which you use when you're at anchor for some reason oh my god this is a big one for some reason when i turn the all-round white anchor light on the tricolor would turn on as well so there was obviously a dodgy connection and i could see there was like a little bit of corrosion up here okay so i've decided i'm gonna take the whole light off I'll probably take it down with me see if it, see if i can fix it and then come back up as you can see, I've taken the light completely off its mount. I've given it a good clean, tightened it up, made sure it's watertight. Hello, Hannah. Can you please do me a favor and turn on the anchor light and turn off the tricolor, please? Over. Hello, Max. Yes, the anchor light is on and the tricolor is off. Get in! I fixed the problem. It should all be good now. Can you just switch that off and switch on the tricolor one more time just so I can double check it's all working? Yes, I'm doing it now. How's that? 
that is just absolutely beautiful. I'm stoked. So I'm just gonna stick it back together and then I'm ready to come down. Thank you very much for all your help. See you in five minutes, over. Yay, I'm glad you fixed it. I'm gonna turn it all off and I'm coming out to let you down. And despite all this wake and the boat rolling around, I managed to not drop any tools, which is great. You can see the bridge over there. Just beyond that is the first lock, the entrance into Lake Gatun. And then behind me, there's a lot of boats anchored out there waiting to go through the canal. Um, so it's quite an interesting spot to just sit and be up here for a bit. And um, obviously one thing that I really enjoy is looking at Elixir from the top of the mast. I think that's a really cool view, the mast head view. Can you let me down please, over? Yes, I can. Gracias. Welcome back. Thank you. Your legs hurt. Yes. It's the worst <laughs> dead leg. Every time I do that. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate your help. Yeah, good job fixing it. That's all right. Yeah, so today we're just um, having a little clean, scrubbing down the decks. Hannah's down there scrubbing all the seaweed somewhere. There she is. How's it going down there? Huh. It's good. It's cold. It's cold? You got a wet to God. It's the Pacific, baby. Finally made it to the keel. Yay. So. <laughs> Almost done. Good job. Thanks. It's a long job, but it's gotta be done. Someone's gotta do it. Someone's gotta do it. This is the first time having to wear a wetsuit doing it. A lot different over here. Different ocean. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thanks, Skipper Poo. <laughs> oh my God. I have been down here for like two hours, two and a half hours, and this is like, this is like what I get. Oh my god, I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How'd it go down there? Oh, it's good. Oh, lots of little shrimp things. How's it feel to be leaving Sweet at the Panama? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. We are gonna go to. Um, Isla Bona and then to Playa Venao for some surfing. So it's gonna be quite a chain from being kind of like locked in the city, not really able to swim in this anchorage or anything. So I am very excited to leave the city. I prefer sailing in more remote locations, even though it's really fun to visit like cities and experience everything. Um, I'm ready to go. Panama City is a really, really big city. It's the first place we came after coming through the canal, of course, and like after San Blas. So San Blas is extremely remote and an indigenous community. So it was a little bit shocking to come to like such a big city after being in such remote areas and stuff. But uh, it was a really good place to like get some work done, meet some friends. I went to this really cool climbing wall, Baboon's climbing wall and I saw a 1914 hostel for like a few nights. Yeah, now we're done in Panama City and it's time to continue the adventure up the Pacific coast. Seems like there's a lot to see and there's a lot of really good surfing. So I'm really excited to go to Playa Venao and Santa Catalina. We've got some new crew joining as well. She joined um, yesterday. Oh, my name is Xi, I'm from China. Definitely a very new experience to me, especially going trip with such cool guys, you know, and Hannah and I forgot your name. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Max. <laughs> Max. <laughs> yeah. Should we do it again? No, that was no, good. No, that's funny. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> experienced new things, and especially with both uh, experienced, um, I don't know, sailors, like you two. So, yeah. How to overcome the uh, seasickness. But I'm 
starting to feel dizzy now. So yeah, we're about to leave Panama City and this is going to be the first sort of like sailing we've done in the Pacific. We spent the last week in an office in the city, which was pretty funny, like pretty different to what we've been doing, but we got loads of work done. We came back to Elixir and just spent a few days like doing all the boat projects, fitted new pumps, fixed the mass head light and the work light, a full service of the windlass, did all the cleaning and stuff. We fixed Ian, Ian doesn't leak air anymore. The boat work, which is unavoidable. That was a really productive week. And now we're gonna to sail to Isla Bona. And that is actually what it's called. And it's like 20 miles. <laughs> it's like 20 miles out there. And then we're gonna stop there for the night and check it out, see what it's like. And then the next day we'll sail to play over now and hopefully do some surfing. This is it. This is the start of like the Pacific leg really. And it's pretty exciting. Like whole new ocean. Let's go. <laughs> Despite Xi's seasickness, we decided to lift the anchor and wave a final goodbye to Panama City. A light breeze filled in and we left on our first proper voyage in the Pacific. We instantly noticed some big changes compared to the Atlantic, which we had become so familiar with. Firstly, the water temperature was certainly a lot colder. The convenient trade winds, which blew all day and night in the Caribbean, had vanished. There was definitely a lot more wildlife and within a few hours we spotted the largest pod of dolphins I've ever seen. What are they doing? What are they doing? That one's just extra. <laughs> but by far, the biggest change was the hefty tidal range which can be found on this stretch of the Pacific. After sailing in the Caribbean for over a year with an almost non-existent tidal range, I'd almost forgotten about the tides. But here, on the Pacific coast of Panama, the sea level can change up to five meters and the tidal currents race between islands, making navigation a little bit more complicated than in the Caribbean. Just that. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you. <laughs> it's your favourite. It's my favourite. <laughs> I just thought I'd do something nice to Hannah and treat her to a favourite snack. Banana and peanut butter. Thank you, that was really nice. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just delete that. <laughs> Isla Bona. And it is quite a lovely place. <laughs> now we're gonna go to shore for sunset. I think we've made a little bit too many boner jokes. I think I think it's probably done. It's probably not funny. How does it feel to be in Isla Bona? <laughs> I have no idea where we are. Is this where we are now? Yes. Oh. Wow, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. I'm confident that I can just start it. Like, second pull, or third. The choke on, turn the fuel on, lead the little float chamber thing. One. I'm calling it a second pull. Second pull. Oh, Shiza. Fuel. Yep. Just, just fuel. That was, that was it. What the problem was? Just didn't realise that. Probably would have gone on the second floor. Yeah, probably would have started on the second floor. This dude was gonna create some great content. Yeah. <laughs>
In the morning, we went to explore the island. On the beach, we found the scattered remains of a wreck, and the island seemed to be inhabited only by a large population of pelicans. It's somewhere we'd never have visited if it wasn't a convenient stop on our way north. And there was something eerie and confusing about the place, and we couldn't help but wonder what its story was. After a short walk, we headed back to Elixir and began to prepare for the next step of the voyage and our first overnight sail in the Pacific. I'm really looking forward to our first night sailing in the Pacific. It's some almost sunset now, and we had a really great night at Isla Bona and swimming in the cold water and I don't know it's definitely already a lot different than sailing in the Atlantic so I'm excited to see how this evening goes. It's been an extremely relaxed day. I've been getting a lot of food shoved in my face while I nap. We're on our way to Playa Venal, a really popular beach on the Pacific coast of Panama where a lot of surfers go. Really looking forward to surfing there, meeting new friends of course as we do. Seeing how it is to anchor on a, in a surf beach in the Pacific, like I'm feeling like it's gonna be a lot different because it is a beach break and the anchorage isn't like completely protected, it is exposed. And finally the wind is picking up now. <laughs> it's been pretty dead. Are you excited for your first night at sea? Yes, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> It's been amazing uh, and I really enjoyed it and that's the experience I never had before. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Max. <laughs> My favorite bit. Uh, you can see a lot of dolphins. And um, also you wake up to the views, you know there's amazing views. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, the sunset's amazing, look. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's update from all of the crew here on Elixir and it would really help us if you like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can get notified every time that we post a new update and there is a Patreon that has exclusive updates from the crew to Patreons only so if you want to help keep Elixir afloat and contribute to the goal of circumnavigating the globe check that out as well and see you guys in the next update thanks again